I had come close to backpacking the Gila in prior years, but it didn't pan out for one reason or another. It felt fantastic to finally be setting out on a trip here. Good afternoon. It is about 1.45 on February 24th. We are heading out on a six night, seven day trip here in the Gila wilderness. We're starting out here on the West Fork of the Gila River and we'll cross over to the Middle Fork. We have a lot of water crossings <laughs> from what I'm told. The water should be pretty brisk because it is winter and there is snow runoff. So we'll see how all that goes. We have hundreds or over a hundred to do throughout the whole trip. Should be exciting. We might have some weather on the way. And uh, I've got Joey and Kyle with me. They keep an eye on me <laughs> with over these water crossings, but it should be a great time. Gila Wilderness was designated the world's first wilderness area on June 3, 1924. Along with Aldo Leopold Wilderness and Blue Range Wilderness, the 558,014-acre wilderness is part of New Mexico's Gila National Forest. The wilderness is approximately 27 miles from north to south and 39 miles east to west. The Mimbres people, a subgroup of the Mogollon, were active between 1000 and 1130 in the Gila wilderness area, leaving cliff dwellings, ruins, and other evidence of their culture. We've been hiking for a few hours now and had to cross the creek a little over a dozen times. Does not appear to be getting any smaller, but um, thankfully it's not too swift and hasn't gotten above the knees yet. have been walking I'd say roughly about two miles so far and we've done approximately 17 water crossings and uh, it seems like the water gets colder the further up the canyon we go. My feet are pretty numb 
but we've seen some ruins. It's beautiful. The watercolor is gorgeous and uh, I'm really enjoying the hike so far. made it to our camp this awesome spot right next to the Gila River and uh, it feels like it's just about time for camp we probably went I'll check on the mileage I don't know but I'm assuming somewhere around six and a half seven miles today and uh, yeah it's nice to be here nice to uh, have a place to get dried off and chill out for the evening no. Uh, a friend gave it to me a couple years ago. I'm using the key flying to catch the tour. What are you eating for dinner tonight? I have granola. It's just Ooh, granola with that. milk and blueberries. It's kind of a breakfast, but. That's by Mountain House. You didn't even have to heat up any water? No, you nice. just pour water in there. My daily check-in with the family on my inReach to let them know all is well in nature. Joey's food and beverage hall for this seven day adventure. Good morning from the Gila. It is a chilly morning, I'm guessing, right now, maybe the high 20s, uh, low 30s. Stay nice and... <laughs> oh, little brat. Good morning. On day two, it is a chilly morning here in the Gila. It's, I'm guessing, in the high 20s, maybe low 30s. It's probably warmed up a little bit since earlier this morning. I stayed nice and warm in my zero degree bag here. And then I also have a sleeping bag liner, which I think adds another about 14 degrees of warmth. So stayed nice and warm. Uh, we got in a little bit late last night. We hiked about six miles, got here just before dark. So we just had dinner, had a nice fire and went to bed. The plan for today is to go about another six miles to Hell's Hole, which is still here in the West Fork. And uh, it should be a beautiful day. The sun's already popping out. It's hitting the higher walls here, but it's going to be a little bit before it makes its way down here to where we are in the canyon. Uh, it'll be nice when it does. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, that's the plan for today. Probably get uh, started after it warms up a little bit here.
gonna be a good day. It's supposed to get cold tomorrow, but um, yeah, hopefully we can get to that waterfall today. That would be sweet. It's about 11.31 and we are just about packed up from camp and ready to hit the trail. Here's our first look at the Gila this morning. Man, doesn't look as big as it was yesterday, but could rise later today. We're expecting it to get hot before the storm. Let's get up to like 78, 79, so there might be some snow melt, but to start crossing pretty easy. We're just coming up to our second water crossing of the morning and we just left camp. Running into some snow here right away too. Going around a big bend in the river. See, we got some high walls above us, and then a bunch of ponderosa trees, and a lot more snow. Crossings are starting to go a little bit deeper. It's up to just over cat's knees. He's right in front of Cat. Yeah. 
Yeah. Can you work your way around it? Okay, careful. Brace yourself. We made it to what might be our potential camp here off the Hell's Hole Trail. Uh, we cannot see the river, we can hear it. We were kind of wanting to be able to see the river. However, it is getting late. It's getting close to dark. <laughs> so we're gonna probably wanna make a decision pretty soon. The boys dropped their packs and went to investigate to see if there was anything a little bit better, but if not, we'll be fine here. Today was a bit more challenging than yesterday. We went about 7.1 miles. However, the river crossings were a bit swifter in areas and uh, the trail was a little less maintained. So yeah, it was definitely a little bit more challenging. I'm pretty beat. I'm looking forward to a nice warm fire, getting out of these wet shoes and socks, some dry socks and a nice warm meal for the evening. This is a beautiful spot. It has a wide open view and today's hike was absolutely stunning. The river watercolor is beautiful. It's beautiful here, so no regrets. I'm so happy to be here, still happy to be here. And uh, let me show you the view I'm looking at. Warm fires were not only comforting, but definitely necessary on these cold nights. Welcome to another edition of Tent Talk. <laughs> I like shooting these morning scenes from bed, essentially. We got some unexpected rain overnight. I pulled up a forecast on my inReach yesterday and it said 0% chance of precipitation, but we all know how that goes. I've mentioned in multiple videos how my inReach is not always accurate. As it looks right now, the storm we've been expecting isn't supposed to arrive now until Wednesday at about 2 p.m. and go through the night into Thursday morning with snow expected as well. So we'll see how that all pans out. The plan for today is to hike about four miles and we're gonna get go off on a kind of a side adventure. We're going to an area that Joey said has some beautiful waterfalls. So we plan to make camp there and just explore that area. I'll give you more details on it later, but it sounds exciting. I look forward to seeing some beautiful waterfalls. And uh, yeah, so we'll get packed up here pretty soon and uh, hit the trail.
the sun is trying to poke through, but at the same time, we're getting a drizzle. Always in the water, and we think we might have just seen some fresh wolf scat, so there might be wolves around here. to our camp. It looks pretty awesome here at White Creek. I see a beautiful meadow right in front of me. The hike today was gorgeous. It looked very different from the terrain that we've been seeing over the last couple of days, or not very different, but definitely a change. Definitely spots that reminded me a bit of Yellowstone, but I think this is going to be a gorgeous camp. The rain has not stopped pretty much. So for 0% chance of rain, <laughs> we've had rain all day. But that's what I was talking about this morning, about my inReach. But uh, yeah, it's going to be an awesome place to call home for the night. After being cold and wet all day, we opted not to go chase in waterfalls. Camp is set up. I put on some warm, dry clothes and now I'm going to make some hot tea. It sounds perfect right about now. Alright, so it has been raining most of the afternoon and when it finally did stop, we walked around and realized there's this five star sweeter campsite right over here, right on the river. So Kat and I decided to move our tents over here. Um, we have a view of the creek, we have a really sweet fire ring and good benches to sit on. Tiny little bit of sun after the rain all night. Good morning, it's day number four. We had kind of a wild night last night. It rained pretty much all night. There were brief 
interludes of no rain, but pretty much rained and sometimes hard. And then the wind kicked up at about 4 a.m. And the gusts were, you could hear it rolling in like a freight train from off in the distance. And unfortunately, we we're in sand. So my tent was staked down. However, with the tugging of the wind constantly at it, it finally worked it loose. So one stake came loose. I came out and fixed that one. Then another stake came loose and I went out and fixed that one. <laughs> and it just happened like about three times in a row. And I'd get back in my tent and have to get back out. But that's part of being out here. I finally got some rocks and got it secured. <laughs> So today we have a pretty big day. It's the biggest day of the trip. We have about 10 to 12 miles to do. We'll be doing a big thousand foot climb right out of the right out of the gate. And that go that's about over a mile. So pretty steep climb up onto a plateau. And I'm told that we're going to an amazing camp. It is has incredible views. I actually did see a photo of it. Kyle showed us a photo. It's one of his favorite camps. So I'm excited to see that and we don't have any water crossings up there so that will be a nice little break from water crossings i have no idea what the weather's going to do today obviously my inreach has been way off the weather has followed a pattern that we originally saw before we head out on the trip when it was telling us that the storm was going to come mostly monday night into tuesday morning so that's what happened last night it's still very cloudy so i really don't know what's going to happen today but crossing my fingers that we have a dry day. Hopefully the sun comes out at some point. That would be wonderful. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a great day regardless. We have hit the trail. And I'm wearing this buff. I got the idea from Kyle. He has his on my face because it's still windy. Pretty cold too. And we have one water crossing coming up here and we'll be done with the water crossings for the rest of the day, which is awesome. And the sun is trying to come out, which is great. The wind is whipping up here, but we do have some good views looking to the south. Let's see how much snow is out there. We've made it to the top of the plateau.
made it to Prior Cabin. Very cool. Old school. Yeah. All right. We are about to have a pretty fantastic view looking down into the Middle Fork. We've arrived at Kyle's camp, which sits here in this little pine needle forest right on the edge of the cliff. So this is going to be home for the night. This is the view from camp. Pretty epic. After a 12 mile day, it's nice to be here. We have made it to our epic campsite after a 12 mile hike. The scenery today was mind blowing, stunning. And I mean, it continues to be at this campsite. It was a long hike, a tiring hike, but worth every step because <laughs> it was just beauty along the way. The Gila wilderness is so diverse. It's really blown my mind, to be honest with you. The guys have a nice fire going back here, so I am going to go join them and just relax for the rest of the evening. You're getting some pink skies way off in the distance there. Pretty sweet firing, totally different than first three nights of camp. Cheating for dinner, mac and cheese. Creamy mac and cheese, yeah. Good morning. Welcome to Tent Talk episode five of this trip. It is day five and uh, it was a chilly, cold night last night, the coldest night of the trip. We're still on the plateau, just warming up with the sun. The sun's out, it feels amazing. We are taking it easy this morning. It's gonna be a short day. We have about, well, we don't know how far we'll go. We'll go down to the Gila River, which is about a thousand foot drop and uh, just 
bank camp probably within a mile or two from there. We have another front moving through. We don't know what that's going to bring. It's going to come through this afternoon, supposedly. Might bring rain and snow. We'll see. Um, but we're just going to take it easy, hunker down, have a mellow day, and then we'll have two more days after today. That could be because I plan to drink when I get down there. What? What was that, Joey? It's going to be a booze cruise today. We got yeah. wine. We got beer. And today's the day to have fun. All we got to do is drop into the canyon and then go down river. We've made it down to the Middle Fork and we're down here at this meadow camp contemplating whether we're going to camp here or move on. Uh, the water level looks pretty high on the Gila. Let me show it to you. We made the decision to try to push on further down the river. After seeing this, I decided I would not be going any further down the river. Kyle is six foot four and much stronger than me. At 5'7 and 125 pounds, I would be no match for that river. Cool. Kyle, that's good, man. You can come back. What's up? You can come back. It's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. So we've decided against going down the canyon. The water was already way steep on Kyle and he wasn't even across the halfway point yet. And we're kind of at the top end of the canyon. It's going to run for another 13 miles with a lot of feeder canyons that are going to be dumping more water into this thing and uh, with more rain coming. I don't know why I'm pointing down that way but Basically, the crossings are just going to get deeper, and so there's no reason to really risk any of this right now. It's really cold. We might have snow later, so we're going to just stop here and think about things. Kyle, so you attempted to cross cross the river. What'd you think? Uh, it's definitely really deep. Um, Currents stronger than it looks. Surprisingly, I was having trouble even moving my my skates in the water. So I mean, it got at the Almost like yeah. It's, it's deep. So we made the call. It's too dangerous, and we are gonna go head back to a safe camp. Yeah, we have a way out that we can get out all on land. So that's what we're gonna do.
need to document this. What is this? What is your forecast saying for tonight? It says heavy snow. Heavy snow? Yeah. What? 100% chance. What time? Uh, it starts at 10 p.m. Yeah. What does it say exactly? Well, it says heavy snow, and that's it. It says heavy snow. 100% chance 100%. tonight. We enjoyed the evening by the fire, having no idea what the morning would bring. Good morning, tent talk day number six, episode six. <laughs> it could be the final episode of this trip. We don't know yet. We're trying to decide whether we're gonna go ahead and hike on out of here. As you saw, it did snow last night. So for once, my in-reach was accurate. We're having some tent malfunctions, a couple of us. The zippers on my vestibules and my doors are not functioning properly. However, I was able to stay dry last night. I'm still dry now. Uh, there's an overlapping flap with Velcro that goes over the zipper. So I've been able to stay dry. Um, I think Kyle had some issues with his tent, some condensation overnight, so he was kind of wet. So we're not the most comfortable, but it's beautiful with the snow on the ground. We don't know how much there's going to be on the plateau because we're down in the canyon. That's another thousand feet up. There might be quite a bit more. So the day is uh, there's some questions when it comes to today, but it is an adventure, that's for sure. So I'll keep you posted on what, uh, what we decide. This is our first look at the river this morning. And looks about the same as yesterday, but um, there's also snowed a bunch. In fact, who knows how much it has snowed up on these plateaus. You can see we're kind of covered here with a little dusting. Pretty beautiful, actually. And so, yeah, we are gonna hang tight for a little bit and see what happens with the weather. It's supposed to clear up, but this is a pretty big canyon. It goes back like 20 miles, and it drains a bunch of side canyons, some big peaks that are all gonna be covered in snow right now. And as that melts, this river is gonna get much, much higher. So, zero chance of going down the middle fork. And who knows what it's gonna be like climbing out of here. Our plan is just basically to climb back up to the top of the plateau, which is gonna be much higher than that, and uh, most likely covered in snow. So we probably have our work cut out for us today. All right, Kat, what do you think? That is a beam of sunlight right above your head yeah. there. How excited are you to uh, hit the trail today? <laughs> Not very excited. Oh, <laughs> we want Happy Cat. Where, where's Happy Cat? <laughs> All right, Happy Cat, why don't you lead us back to the car? We uh, 
are going to just walk around the corner here and then start walking or climbing up to the top of the plateau and then we're going to see what that looks like but we're expecting to have wet cold feet most of the day I was nervous. I was nervous about ice and snow on the trail and what the snow levels would be at the top of the plateau. topped out on our plateau this is our old campsite from two nights ago you can see it's uh covered in a little skiff of snow but not really much so that's a really good sign we'll walk out here and take one last look down at the middle fork and uh looks a little bit different than when we were here last we made it to the top of the plateau and it is stunning up here the climb up was not as bad as I was envisioning. I was preparing for the worst case scenario. It wasn't bad at all. And it uh, looks like the snow up here on the plateau is not too bad either. Maybe, I don't even think it's half an inch deep. So I think we're in good shape. Look at that. Oh man, that looks like wolf to me. <laughs> that is my hand for size. But that looks like a wolf track. That would be a really big coyote. Look at this one. Whoa. That's almost as big as my hand. The decision has been made. We are going to walk the rest of the way out. We are here on the ridge line. We're gonna be uh, dropping down to TJ's Corral. And then it's about an hour road walk to the car, or not an hour, excuse me, a mile <laughs> road walk to the truck, which Joey has so graciously offered to do while we wait. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna enjoy being up here on the ridge with these beautiful views. And then uh, that'll be the end of this trip. After taking several years to finally get here, Gila Wilderness far exceeded my expectations. It is remote, stunning, and diverse, and we saw no other people for the six days that we were there. It also happened to be celebrating its 100th year as a wilderness area. It is someplace I see myself returning to again and again.